Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy, in the words of Andrew Luck, happy June. Um, I will give folks just another minute to, to jump on, and then we will get started. Okay. Well, I think we can get ourselves going. Let me see if I can get the proper webcam run here. Every so often, it gives me a little bit of a headache getting the right one started. Okay, there we go. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the June edition of Power BI Office Hours. My name is Eric, uh, and <clears throat> I'm joined by my colleague, Jesse, who's kind of in the background. Uh, we're here to talk about Power BI. So uh, for those of you that are new, uh, welcome to the proceedings. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. Thanks for coming back. Um, just a quick note, we are recording uh, this webinar, this session. So uh, if you um, if you do not want to be on a recorded call, now is the time to drop. Um, also, uh, we've we've got time built in uh, for you to answer your questions. So uh, if you've got any questions, um, let them fly. Let me adjust my camera here a little bit. That's a little better. Um, so there's a Q and A panel that you can use. Um, so, uh, throw your questions in there. Uh, we will reserve a good 25 to 30 minutes to answer those questions. Uh, so, um, the sooner you get them in, the better. That way I can kind of plan the time, uh, accordingly. So, as always, a couple of polls as we get going here. Uh, so first, uh, in, so however you are viewing, uh, uh, go to webinar. Uh, there should be a link in either the browser or the tool uh, to answer a poll question. So first, just curious what your level of experience is with Power BI. <coughs> All right. Great, thanks. And then just curious, what do you do? Turn out a little fan. It's a little warm here in Michigan this morning. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Uh, so as we're going here, um, as uh, if you ever want to review this session or any other session that we've done, uh, check out our YouTube channel. Um, you'll find not only these sessions, but all sorts of other content out there. Uh, if you hit subscribe, you'll get notices uh, when we post new videos. So definitely check that out, um, as well as our blog. So if you just go to bluegranite.com, you'll find all sorts of great resources out there, um, uh, including one on one of the new features that dropped here in the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, also, if you're interested in some of our other uh, services, there's a services tab, including a link to our training offers. So if you're looking for Power BI training, uh, check that out. Uh, and lastly, for those of you who uh, are using the reporting ser the report server version of the tool, the features we're going to talk about today don't apply to you. Uh, you had a, a recent May release that had some, some nice features, but you don't have uh, the report server product is updated three times a year in January, May, and September. So the features I'm going to chat about today don't apply to your version. Uh, so uh, the agenda for today, we'll talk about uh, the, the features of the June 22 release. I'll demo a couple of them. There's some really neat features that just rolled out. Uh, but again, then we've got time for your questions. So let them fly. Uh, any question is fair game. If I don't know the answer, chances are I've got somebody here who does. So. That's the general uh, uh, plan for the day. So let's start by talking about the features in the June 2022 release. Uh, so first off, if um, the new format pane is now rolled out. So um, as soon as you update to the uh, June 2022 release, you're gonna have that new format pane turned on. Uh, so it's no longer a preview feature. Uh, new installs, starting in March, I think, 
new installs had the feature turned on. Now it's just on. So uh, time to start getting used to the new the new format pane if you haven't uh, done that yet. Uh, they're still making some updates to those uh, error bars. Um, sadly, the data that I have doesn't do a very good job of demoing error bars. Um, the training data set that I have doesn't have any any outliers. Uh, some information protection get, is getting more and more uh, attention. So um, in this particular update, uh, when you connect to sensitive data in the desktop, you get a little warning. Um, so uh, some nice thing there. Uh, fun for any of you who are a little frustrated with the table visualization in Power BI, they're starting to make some nice improvements there, primarily around visual interactions um, and so forth. So uh, some nice ways to make it more apparent which rows you've selected uh, and those types of things. So um, uh, still not as flexible as, say, some of the custom table visualizations out there, uh, but some nice improvements there. Uh, and then if any of you have noticed the canvas zoom, uh, so we've got our little zoom bars uh, down in the lower right hand corner. Uh, those are now available in Teams as well. So some nice things there as far as being able to just get a better view of the, of the report. On the data prep side, uh, analysis services uh, support, supports composite models. Uh, we won't really, we're gonna focus on Power BI today, so we won't really talk about that. So the big one, the big release, that's probably gonna get a lot of attention um, once it starts coming out of preview are data marts. So we're gonna to talk today about what data marts are. Um, so that, will, that always kicks off some fun, interesting philosophical debates. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, a couple new connectors, um, one to Databricks, which will probably be pretty popular, uh, and then some updates as well. Uh, so new connectors ro are rolling out uh, every every month. There's another nice feature that I think some of you are really going to enjoy. Uh, David Eldersveld in, I think it was March 2022, demoed this, and it, not many people noticed it at the time, uh, but there's this new feature called Power BI Data Storytelling, or what I call embedding content in, in PowerPoint. So I'm gonna demo that for you today as well. This is gonna allow you to actually embed live Power BI content within a PowerPoint presentation. We're gonna do it in this presentation here today. Um, so some really neat capabilities there um, for those of you that are using Power BI to present data. There's no more need to take you know, uh, uh, screenshots. Now you can just embed links to the report. You're off and running. Uh, we have the new, uh, what they call the data hub. I'll show you that. Um, and then some more updates to the Power BI metrics, which formerly known as goals. Uh, some new visualizations that came out. Um, now, I saw this on the on the blog. It, it, it says the Mapbox custom visual is a new one, but there's always been the Mapbox one. So I'm not, I got to do some more investigation in terms of what, what happened there. Um, because uh, it seems to be the same one, but they're labeling it as new. So I don't know what that means. Um, along with some other updates out there as well. So if any of you have uh, been actively playing with some of these, uh, let me know. I'd really like to get your feedback on how uh, some of these are, are working. What, when we start to get into some of the really esoteric uh, custom visuals, I don't have many clients that use them. So I'm always interested to hear uh, from those of you that are currently using those products. Uh, some fun new features around uh, for any of you folks that are doing embedding. Um, some really nice features there, including support for direct query um, uh, and single sign-on. That was probably the big feature update for embedded. Uh, and then some other things around uh, custom visualizations for those of you that are actually developing them. Um, I don't do that. We've got a couple guys here who do that uh, or a couple folks here. That, that build custom visualizations. I am not one of them. <laughs> so, uh, but some nice uh, uh, features there, but I want the two that I want to focus on today um, are the, the storytelling, and then we'll talk about data marts, and then hopefully we've got some questions to throw in either the chat window or the questions panel. Okay, so first let's talk about 
data storytelling. Um, and so, and I, in fact, I'm going to use this presentation right here. So let's let's just create a new slide here. Okay. So what is data storytelling? Essentially, what we have here is the ability to embed live content. So, for example, I have this uh, this report just in PowerBI.com. This is a pretty standard Microsoft demo. You've surely seen this in other places. So if I want to um, use this report within a Power BI presentation, it's pretty simple. So it's just export. And you'll notice that now this Power BI has, or PowerPoint, beg your pardon, has this little sub menu. And so here we can do embed live data. And what this is going to do now to do this, the person per doing the presentation must have access to the content. So this is not a, a shortcut around licensing. OK. So I'm going to click copy. And then now for those of you that are on now, I'm on they, the documentation says that. Users in Office 365 should already have the add-in here on the insert menu. I don't. Um, so I had to click the get add-ins. And then you just search for Power BI. Now, when you do this, don't confuse the Power, the Microsoft Power BI one with the Power BI tiles one that exists out there. So it's not this first one. It's the second one. Okay. This Power BI tiles, this has been around for a couple of years. Uh, it's a, it built by a third party. You want the Microsoft Power BI one. So don't get them confused. So once it's there, oops, there it is. Oh, I didn't get that last night. I wonder why I got it now. So here I can just say paste, insert. And we'll let this guy load up. And I'll resize it a little bit. There we go. Let's look at some data. So you'll notice here that what my visual interactions work, my little buttons work. I'm in I'm in PowerPoint. So let's see what this looks like now. Here's back to our slideshow. So slideshow, slideshow, slideshow with live Power BI content in PowerPoint. I haven't done a whole ton of really hardcore testing here as far as, you know, features and functionality. As far as I can tell, everything works. Um, but I, again, I have not, th this feature is still in preview. So just a heads up there. Um, but from what I've seen so far, everything seems to work. Uh, this is fantastic because now, right before, really our only option as far as in PowerPoint in our presentations was just to embed images. Now we can be here live, you know, and if somebody, if one of the, the people we're presenting to has a question, we're right off and running. So there's some really neat uh, capabilities here. Um, I, so there you go, back to my next slide. So it's really just kind of that easy um, to embed some live content within Power BI, PowerPoint. Sorry, <laughs> they got so many, so many products that have the word Power. Anybody played with Power Pages now? That's the that's the latest one. Let's just get rid of the word power and call it BI and point and pages, et cetera. So I keep tripping over that sort of stuff. Um, so this this is part of a, a broader what they're called uh, data storytelling. Um, so uh, but as you can see, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, does this live embed work for PowerPoint only? I think so. I believe that to be the case. Um, if you want to embed in other apps, you're going to have to do the classic embedding. Um, so now, now we're starting to get outside of my realm of expertise because uh, I am in no way uh, an app developer. But um, 
my understanding is that it's if you to embed this report in say a portal it should you should be it should be as easy as something like this like here's the iframe code so i i know enough about web development to know what an iframe is but you to to embed inside other apps maybe like salesforce um or your own homegrown applications you're going to want to use uh these links here so i got there from file embed report be careful with publish to web because publish to web is going to create uh, a link that anybody who can get the link can view the report so be be careful with that that is something i think your admins can turn off yes that is something your admins can turn off if you're if you're worried about it um and if you want let me we we actually have a a blog article that that brian wrote a couple years ago uh, but if you want to know about embed so there's two of them. The other one's a licensing conversation. But here's here's a good primer. If you if for example you, if you know how to do like MVC applications and things like that, um, that's what Brian talks about here. In fact, he even gives you some code. So if you're curious, and there's all sorts of things around embedding. Um, you know, in terms of app owns the data versus user owns the data, and all, all sorts of fun things around authentication and so forth. So, um, but yeah, if you want to do it in other applications, you can use the standard embedding stuff. And if you if you need more help, just let us know. Uh, be, I, I'd be more than happy to put you in touch with the folks here who know how to do it, because I don't, I can talk about it, but I can't do it. <laughs> so, all right, so that I thought was pretty neat, right? And, and so as you can see, Microsoft is really making a big push to, to surfacing data in as many places as we can. So it's, you know, making sure that we're using data to make decisions at every touch point throughout our workday. So um, some really neat things uh, there. Uh, another one that you guys might find interesting um, is we have a new button in Power BI Desktop. Uh, we've got the Data Hub button. So uh, I believe this replaced, I think the button used to be just Power BI data sets and they changed it. So for any of you who, uh, who maintain a lot of documentation with Power BI, you're getting, if you're like me, you might be getting frustrated with all the changes they make. You have to constantly go and do redo screenshots. But the data hub now replaces what used to be just the Power BI data sets button uh, because this is gonna support the new uh, preview feature called data marts and I'm really interested to see kind of what discussions this starts to bring because um, you know back back in my early days in the early aughts when I got my start in BI I was the I was the head of the, the BI team and so I spent my days building big data warehouses right and big analysis services cubes and then, so I'd spend all that time to do that, and then all these beautiful reports in ProClarity, only to learn that all of my users were really just taking them and dumping them to Excel and creating their own versions of their own personal little data marks, primarily in Access or in Excel, right? So one of the hardest lessons for me to learn was to, I had to accept that that was happening. Uh, the problem was is that we didn't have any insight into the fact that it was happening. Uh, this is going to allow our business users to do that same type of thing, but do it in a hosted service where we can get visibility to it. This is a premium only or PPU only feature, okay? Um, but essentially, here I am in a, in a PPU workspace, and I did a create new data mart just because it takes a second to, to spin things up. But what this is doing is it's creating a, a managed Azure SQL database where you can really just use Power Query to start pulling in your data. Uh, so, for example, see what they have under advanced options. Yes, we're going to uncheck that box. Don't need to worry about that. And then. We'll see if I typed in that password correctly. 
Um, but now, so I can come in here and pick, you know, a couple of views, et cetera. Maybe this and this and these three. And we're in Power Query. So what this is, this is bigger than data flows, okay? Data flows are what I would consider reusable ETL code. Okay, so if you're doing the same thing in Power Query over and over and over again, do it once as, as a data flow and use the data flow. This is, I think, taking it to the next step and actually creating a managed SQL database that we can query with other tools. Like this data mart that's created in Power BI in a Power BI service can be queried from Management Studio. Okay, and you can do all your fun sort of stuff. So, um, like, I can come in and. Let's see if I can do a couple of them. Wait for this to spin up so I can do a couple of merges. So if any of you are new to Power Query, uh, you're getting a little preview of what we do in our training class. We'll click OK. So a lot of the stuff that you've been doing in your everyday life in Power Query, you can do here. And so you can see you can do the bulk of the, the options you have in standard Power Query desktop. You've got here in Power Query uh, in, in the data marts. Uh, let's do one more. So it, it is definitely a, a step beyond data flows and again it's it's premium and ppu only so if you if you don't if you're not a premium client or you're not ppu you, you're getting well sadly i'm showing you a feature you don't have access to um but this is the general idea right uh, and i'll disable the load on these guys so this is very much like building the power bi model it's the, the 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 data set itself but as opposed to a tabular model it's now creating a sql database under the uh, under the sheets so i think this is going to introduce some really interesting conversations right about who owns what um and you know the nice thing is is that all of this stuff is configurable as far as um, who has access to what features. So if, you're, if your organization wants, you know, the, the classic sort of what we call quote unquote corporate owned BI, where it generally falls under the IT umbrella, we can leave it, you can leave it there. If you're an organization that's not, um, I have some clients that outsource all their IT stuff. So they prefer to keep most of this stuff in their business analyst hands they can do that so um uh, here you can do fun things like role level security and so forth so um some neat capabilities again i haven't really noticed here i can write a sql query so select star from channel there you go so uh, and I can connect to this data mart. Let's see, how do I get out of here? Sorry, I should have turned off my ringer. I apologize. Check out our relationships view. There you go. So it's going to be fun to play with this a little bit more. Uh, as we go, there's my new data. There's my data mart. There's my data set. And so now, if I come in here, there's the data mart that I just created. So the 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 big difference between a data mart and a data set. A data mart's actually a managed SQL database. The data set's the classic tabular model that we've been creating all along. So I'm interested to kind of see where that feature goes. 
Uh, again, I haven't I haven't stress tested it much because uh, it's brand new. Um, but uh, that's what that data parts feature is going to do. Not quite sure why Power BI is hanging on me now. That's, last night it didn't hang. Today it wants to hang. Go figure. We'll see if it ever comes back. Um, let me see. Let me come back to my presentation while we're waiting for Power BI and see if there's anything else. I'm not seeing anything in the questions panel, so we might have a really quick day today. Um, what else can I tell you about uh, as far as updates go? Um, yeah, I don't have any really good examples for the, the table update. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see kind of where the data sets go or data marts go, and then now being able to embed Power BI content right within our PowerPoint decks. Let's see if this guy's ever come back. There we go. So I can connect to, you know, these two tables in my data mart. There's information privacy. And now you can see I've got a couple, I've got new tables in my model. These are the two from my data mart that I combined with. These are imported models in my data set. So there you go. Some fun features in the June 2022 release. Quiet day on the questions panel. Um, so it, any questions that I can help with today? Um, I'll also put my email in the chat window. If you've got lot, if you've got actual things that you want me to try to do, uh, I'm always happy to do real world scenarios on these sessions. So if you'd like me to take a look at something, um, shoot me an email. Uh, can you call Snowflake routines or surfaces for Power BI pageant reports? Good question. I don't know. Um, I believe the answer is yes. I think we've got one Snowflake uh project running right now so i'll have to ask those guys but I, I believe the answer is yes i don't have a snowflake instance to connect to to test it um but let's see if i can suss it out just from using the snowflake connector let's find out come on power bi you can do it If not, I'll ask the folks here and uh, so here it looks like you can search. I, I believe the answer is yes, because also all I did is I came in and expanded advanced options. And down here under the SQL statement, my hunch is this is where you would do your routine. You know, in T-SQL, it's just exec or SP underscore execute. Um, I'm supposing you can do the same thing here, although I've never tried it. Uh, in paginated reports, it would probably be the same thing. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have a Snowflake instance to, to connect to Numerata. So what I'll do is I'll ask the folks here once we're off the call, uh, and then I'll let you know next month if you want to come back. But I don't know the, I believe the answer to your question is yes. And you would just do that by coming here clicking it in the Snowflake connector, clicking advanced options. Notice you're gonna to have to include the database name and then try putting it in here. So that's what I would try. Good. Yeah, I, I should find, we don't have a Snowflake instance to connect to here at Blue Granite, so I can't demo it. I should see if I can stand one up. Very good. Okay, any other questions? Otherwise, I can give everybody 30 minutes back in their day. Uh, we really appreciate you guys taking the time to spend with us. We know your time's valuable, so we appreciate you coming here.
Uh, don't forget, check out our website. All sorts of fun content out here. Um, the next the next session will be uh, in July. I forgot to put the date in my slide deck, um, but it will be third week in July is when the next one will be coming up, and we'll just keep barreling on. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions, so we'll call it a day. Um, thanks again. Have a great, hopefully everybody's summer is off to a good start, and uh, hopefully everybody's safe and enjoying the nice weather, and we'll see you guys back here in July. All right, everyone, thanks again. See you in July. Have a great rest of your week.